Hey guys, Jordy here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, unfortunately, Jill has a bad migraine today, which is why I'm taking over. So go ahead and wish him well in the comments, guys. Now, today I'm gonna teach you the best editing workflow that you can have for any project in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's not wait any longer and dive right in. Now, before we even start editing, we have to import our footage. Now, do not just import everything and leave it as it is in the project. Start off with making different bins. Name each bin according to the type of assets that you're going to place in it. For example, rushes or footage, music, sound effects, overlays, other assets, and so on. Then once you've imported everything into bins, you can start with making your sequences. And I recommend making two, one which you call footage and one for the actual edit of your project. Now, like the name says, you want to place all your footage that you like in the first sequence. So check out every shot you've taken. Use the in and out keys to make a selection and place that clip in the footage sequence. This is basically going to be the clip selection sequence. The second sequence you can drag and place underneath the first sequence. And this technique is called pancake editing because you layer the sequences above each other. In the second sequence, you can already place the song which you like to edit on if you like so. Then you can just use the clips from the footage sequence to make your edits to the music in the project sequence. Simply drag and drop it from one sequence to the other. Then the next step is to structure your edits and make sure that you have a logical order when working with different tracks. For instance, if you have interview shots, which we call A-roll, then place these in track number one. B-roll shots, so basically shots of stuff that is being talked about or shots that just enhance the edits can be placed on track number two. And if needed, also track number three. If you have animations or titles that need to be added, these can be placed on track number four and so on. You can also rename your tracks to get an instant view of what's in sight. Simply right click onto the tracks and choose rename track. Another way to keep everything more organized is with the use of color labels. Simply right click on a clip or a selection of clips, then select label and choose a specific color. You can customize these colors as well from the preferences tab in the edit menu and of course you can also set short keys for them. Now something that will come out super handy is the use of previews. In your projects panel, right click on your sequence and choose sequence settings. Under video previews, make sure that the preview file format is set to QuickTime and the codec to Apple ProRes 422. Now this setting creates ProRes files from the renders that you make. Once we get into the export, you'll see why this is gonna be useful. Now once you're happy with your edit and the overall structure, you can close the footage sequence. If there are any shots that need VFX and therefore need to be brought over to After Effects, I recommend duplicating these to the upper track. This is because when we now right click and choose replace with After Effects composition, the clip will be replaced with that After Effects project file. But since we've duplicated it, we still have the original one just in case something went wrong or you might want to change something to the original. Now if you are completely new to Adobe After Effects, I can highly recommend to check out our complete beginners class. You'll learn how to get started and get familiar with the user interface. As of lesson 2, we'll already start with compositing and creating visual effects. You'll learn about 3D tracking, animations and so much more. It's broad in a fun and super engaging way and more than a thousand of reviews can confirm that, which I'm super grateful for. You can check out this class as well as our other classes about Premiere Pro and filmmaking by clicking the first link in the description down below. And if you're new to Skillshare, you can get an exclusive 14-day trial completely for free, so there's no reason not to check it out. Go ahead. All right, next is the color grading process. If you shot an interview or any other type of footage that was a really long take and you have cut it up into multiple pieces throughout the edit, then don't go ahead and color correct each single one of these clips. Simply select one, then head over to the effects controls panel and select the master clip. Then apply your color correction to that master clip, which will have effect on the entire interview. For the color correction of the other shots, I recommend correcting the clip separately to get the right overall exposure and color temperature. But for the color grade, go to the project panel, right click and create an adjustment layer. Then place this above all of your other layers and color grade that adjustment layer. Now this layer is actually doing nothing because it's a non-destructive transparent layer and every effect that is applied to it will be applied to everything underneath. And that's why it's so useful. Make it the same length as your entire edit or a specific portion of it that you want to grade and bam, everything will have the same look. 
Okay, next up is sound designing your project. Now, why is it so important to sound design your videos? Well, it creates more depth, dynamic, and realism to your videos. So go ahead and download a whole bunch of sound effects from online libraries or record your own. Then import them into your sound effects bin and start adding them to your timeline. Once again, try and keep everything structured. If you already have a music track and a track with voiceovers, make sure to label those and place the different kinds of sound effects on different tracks. These sound effects are atmospheric or ambient sounds, like city sounds or the sound of a forest. Essential sounds, which are clearly visible elements on screen like birds, cars, machines, bikes, people and so on. And lastly, I have a bottom track on which I place extra elements like swooshes, whips, risers and other sounds that create either transitions or add more vibrance or suspense to the edit. Now don't forget to make adjustments to your sound effects as well. Add reverb, play around with gain or loudness, keyframe if needed. Use equalizer effects to create specific sounds like it's coming from underwater or like it's coming through an old radio. And you can do all of that with the essential audio panel. There are even a bunch of presets which you can just click and instantly use. Super useful. Now important is that you make a mix, which means that every sound has its own volume. Some sounds should be louder than others, so don't just crank up the volume of every sound. Now here's the final thing that we can do to make the entire project less heavy and more organized. Go over to the edit menu and select delete unused. And this will get rid of all the clips and assets that weren't necessary in this project. Keep in mind that even clips that you don't use make the Premiere project go slower. Okay, you now have a structured, organized and well edited video full with effects, color grading and sounds. It's basically finished, but now comes the part where a lot of people make mistakes. From the sequence, hit Ctrl M on your keyboard to get to the export menu. If you want your video to be posted on YouTube, for example, set the format to H264 and the presets either to match source, high bitrate or go to the YouTube presets that Premiere Pro has already provided. Then set the output destination, name your video and then go over to this checkbox right here on the bottom which says use previews. Now since you've probably rendered your video to have a smooth playback while editing and since we've set the video file preview to Apple ProRes in the beginning, we will have a way faster export now when we enable this. Premiere Pro will use those rendered ProRes files for the export which will drastically speed up the exports. And now you can go ahead and share your final video with your friends, your client or your private collection. I hope this video helped you a lot with your editing workflow and if you have any other questions feel free to put them in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next week for a new video. Don't forget to check out our After Effects class. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and as always stay creative.